Thanks to Miami's season opening loss to BYU, Notre Dame came into its 1990 opener holding the same honor it owned most of the previous season, the number one ranking. But Lou Holtz had his share of concerns about his own team and fourth-ranked Michigan. I see some things that lead me to believe that we have a chance to be a good offensive football team, but it is not at the present time. I, I think Michigan's ability to run the football always scares you, and then their ability to throw the ball with curve back. While Holtz pondered how well Irish newcomers would perform at quarterback on the offensive line and in the secondary, first-year Wolverine coach Gary Muller was intent simply upon ending Notre Dame's three-year winning streak against Michigan. But his team's start proved anything but auspicious as John Vaughn fumbled on the second play from scrimmage and Greg Davis recovered on the Michigan 26. Junior fullback Rodney Culver set the tone for the Notre Dame ground game on first down and sophomore quarterback Rick Meyer optioned his way into the end zone five plays later. Double tight end for the Irish. Fake to Culver on the option. Meyer for touchdown. Rick Meyer running the option right for a score as the Irish go 27 yards in six plays. Meyer going over from the two. After a Michigan field goal, Meyer jump-started the next Irish possession with a completion to Ricky Waters. A 22-yard gallop by Culver set up a Tony Brooks scoring dive and the Irish led 14-3 after the first period. But the Wolverines came back to dominate most of the second and third periods. Michigan's defense kept the Irish mired in their own territory while Vaughn's running and Elvis Gerbeck's passing provided the visitors with a 24-14 advantage as the fourth quarter began. After a missed Michigan field goal, Notre Dame received a huge lift from a critical third down pass that glanced off the fingertips of Ragib Ismail into the arms of freshman Lake Dawson for a 41-yard gain. From there, the Irish made use of 10 straight running plays with Culver powering the last yard and making it 24 to 21. Both teams came up with key interceptions to call a halt the scoring opportunities Michael Stonebreaker grabbed onto a Gerbeck pass in the end zone. Then, after a 35-yard scamper by Regib Ismail, Veda Murray did the same for Michigan. Finally, it was the Irish who took command with a do-or-die 76-yard march in the final four minutes. Meyer got his team out of one jam with an off-balance third-down completion to Tony Smith. Ricky Waters rambled for 16 more to the Michigan 43. Then on first and 10 from the 18, Meyer found sophomore flanker Adrian Gerald between a pair of defenders for what proved to be the winning points. Michigan's last hope was snuffed out by Reggie Brooks' pickoff on first down as Notre Dame's 18th straight win at home was secured. Holtz and his Irish knew there was plenty of room for improvement but they couldn't have scripted a more scintillating conclusion for CBS Sports' national television audience as the Irish debuted with a victory against a team that turned out to be as powerful as any they would play all season. As a perfect October Saturday dawned in South Bend, there was little concern about the emotional level of their players as far as Notre Dame coach Lou Holtz and Miami counterpart Dennis Erickson knew. After all, this series had developed into one of the most highly charged in college football in recent years as the Irish and the Hurricane jousted for national championships. But with Miami dominating the scoreboard in many of the recent confrontations, Holtz had a much more basic concern. Were his Irish good enough to win, especially from a defensive standpoint? You got to put your defense first or, or, or you're never gonna be a real good football team. And Miami, you know, they're averaging 42.3 points per ball game and, and, and we, we have not even played the way an average defensive football team would be in the country. So you go into a ball game like this, you say, well, Miami, if, you know, going up on their basic average, you're going to put 44, 45 points on the, ball, on the board, and there's no way we're going to score that many. So and that's why you have some concern. Whatever air had been pumped into the Irish balloon by a pumped-up Notre Dame Stadium crowd and a national television audience on CBS, promptly fizzled away when Notre Dame fumbled the football to the Canes on the very first play from scrimmage. Miami needed but six running plays to take advantage, and the second-ranked visitors had the early lead. 
The Irish escorted the ball 58 yards on a methodical drive that ended in a Craig Hendrick field goal. Miami then matched those three points after intercepting a Rick Meyer pass. The first miscue he'd thrown in 87 tries. Next, it was Ragib Ismail who pumped the life back into the Notre Dame faithful. Here's the run up and the kick by Huerta. It'll come down and the rocket will get a shot at it at the 6. Brings it back to the 10, to the 15, at the 20, 25, to the left, at the 30. Look out, it's going to be a foot race. To the 40, to the 50, down the sideline, at the 30, pulling away, at the 20, the stand by, touchdown all the way. 94 yards. The partisan Irish crowd was now back in the game. So too was the Notre Dame defense as Greg Davis displayed in stepping in front of Randall Hill to pick off a Craig Erickson pass. Ismail displayed his versatility with a 20-yard gain on a reverse. But the Canes held firm again, so Hendrick converted the second of his field goals for a 13-10 advantage. Erickson completed four passes for 58 yards on Miami's next offensive chance, and the Canes quarterback snuck the final yard himself for a 17 to 13 advantage. But the Irish weren't finished yet in the opening half. Meyer zeroed in on Waters for a 23 yard game, half of a march that concluded with a third Hendrick field goal. And the Irish defense did its part in thwarting Miami's last two second period possessions. As the second half evolved, so did the dominance of the bend but not break Notre Dame defense. All-American Chris Zorich nailed Leonard Conley for a loss on the first play of the third quarter. When the Hurricanes took over again, Scott Kolakowski forced Stephen McGuire to fumble on the initial play, and George Williams recovered. After a 36-yard Hendrick field goal, Miami's offense was halted in its tracks, first by Andre Jones, then by Demetrius Dubose. Meyer carefully moved Notre Dame within striking distance again, scrambling once for 18 yards and nearly connecting with Tony Smith in the end zone. That left it for Hendrick to add his record fifth three-pointer to make it 22 to 17. Next came what turned out to be Miami's only scoring of the final 30 minutes. Erickson threw the ball seven times. Then, from a first and goal at the eight, the dogged Irish defenders forced three straight incompletions. That permitted Carlos Huerta to connect, to trim the deficit to two points. After a Notre Dame punt, All-American cornerback Todd Light bailed the Irish out by hauling in an errant Erickson toss at his own eight. With a cat-quick Ismail now operating at tailback, the Irish took advantage of a Miami defense that was on the field for more than 21 minutes of the second half. First, he took a pitch down the right sideline for a 16-yard gain. Next, on a reverse, he turned the corner for 28 more. Then, facing an all-out blitz on third and four, Meyer dropped the ball off to Rodney Culver and he knifed his way into the end zone for the 21-yard scoring play. Trailing 29 to 20, Miami wasn't finished yet. The Canes swept quickly into Irish territory, but Greg Davis knocked the football away from Conley and Stonebreaker recovered at the Notre Dame two, and that's the last Miami would see of the football. Meyer used nine running plays and a pair of third down conversions to run out the final four minutes and 44 seconds on the clock. Great run and a first down. Look at him go. Ricky Waters to the 30. No one's going to catch him. Touchdown, Notre Dame. I remember he motioned to me to do a middle return. I gave him the thumbs up sign like, okay, coach, we got you. Everything's fine. And in my mind, I really didn't think they were going to actually punt it to us. Tom Ruin, who the year before led the nation in punting, I thought he was just going to show off his leg one last time before he took his journey into the NFL. Well, they punt the ball away, and as the ball was sailing in the sky, it became apparent that the ball wasn't going to go over my head and that I was going to have to catch it. Luckily for me, there was a prevailing thought 
that came to my mind. And that thought was, don't go down. No matter what, don't go down. First priority is to get the kick away. The Irish will send 10 men. And then they back off. Well done. The rocket at the 10. And he's corralled for a moment. Breaks into the clear. One man to beat, and he won't get him. The rocket, Ismael, has done it again. Touchdown, Notre Dame. And it was just a great euphoric feeling. We accomplished the goal. Everything that was supposed to be actually became, scored a touchdown, and then 